Mental Liberation, an Iron March publication, Chapter 4, Purging the Poison Within, Knowing and Doing. Walking the path of truth in a world of lies demands a vivid spirit and constant vigilance. The constant friction between what you know to be right and what is constantly presented to you by your peers can feel like the world is pressing on your shoulders and driving you into the ground, unable to act. Previous chapters have dismantled the web of lies and misconceptions that entangle your mind. Knowing of these snares is half the battle, but only half. Simply being aware, simply having an intellectual understanding of the mind poisons that surround you, will not prevent them from weakening you. You may reject the social pressure defiantly, but it doesn't entirely remove the weight from your shoulders. The poison that afflicts the world still affects you. If a thousand leeches cover your body and drain you of blood, simply knowing they are there and recognizing that they are harmful is insufficient. The leeches must be removed. If the previous chapters were concerned primarily with your understanding and attitude, this one will address the actions that are necessary to complete your mental liberation. In other words, how to remove the leeches draining your energy so that you regain the strength to act. Action is necessary, because ideas only truly acquire force when they are accompanied by action. If you believe in the importance of physical strength, yet do nothing to cultivate it in yourself, then your belief is meaningless. If you recognize the futility of political parties and elections, yet follow the news closely and get worked up at everything the government does, then you are not any more free than the masses who sincerely believe in democracy. It is only by changing your behavior that you can begin to truly understand the meaning of your ideas and principles, and it is only by adopting a new lifestyle that you can draw on the power inherent in those ideas. The fanatic gets his unwavering determination from his daily rituals, his adherence to the code of his religion. He is the incarnation of his faith. The fascist revolutionary also claims to become a living incarnation of the truth and to derive his power from that. Becoming the Embodiment of Truth becoming the embodiment of truth. Even a brief contact with mainstream culture reveals that the masses are obsessed with their lifestyle choices. A thousand and one fad diets come and go with the wind. Ridiculous exercise machines are sold on television along with blenders to make healthy juice. Endless debates populate the airwaves about the evils or merits of cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, alcohol, video games, and everything else under the sun. This obsession is quite different, however, from the obsession of the religious zealot who tailors his life to the demands of his god, and it is also completely unrelated to the fascists' concerns. The masses, drunk on materialism, are simply worried about the best way to maximize their sensual enjoyment and narcissism. Exercise and diet are a means to look good to preserve their vanity. Quitting cigarettes is done simply because of the fear of death and pain that comes from disease. Concerns over video game or porn addictions are merely a result of the reduced econ economic productivity it causes or physical problems like erectile dysfunction. None of this matters for the revolution. In the fight against the system, in the struggle of truth against the tide of falsehood swallowing the world, only failure is immoral. If you are remembered by future generations, it will be for your accomplishments alone, not for your diet or use of this or that substance. Thus our concern over action or lifestyle flows from a different place from what is commonly seen in society at large. Purge your mind. Purge from your mind all liberal notions of taking care of myself or avoiding dangerous things. What we're concerned about is to prepare our bodies for the task of revolutionary struggle and freeing ourselves from the spiritual ills that lead us to failure, and at a higher level, doing what we can to make our lives a reflection of the universal truth which rules over all things. You understand the truth that the electoral politics shell game is meaningless, only a trap to prevent real change from threatening the system. 
You become the embodiment of that truth by ignoring debates, elections, candidates, shutting it all out while defiantly proclaiming, Me ne frego. I don't give a damn. You understand the truth, that the entertainment industry, including television, movies, and pornography, is a Jewish operation to demoralize the people. You become the embodiment of that truth by throwing out the TV and keeping your mind free from Jewish mind control. You understand the truth that the culture of consumerism is a hamster wheel meant to keep the masses enslaved to their desires. You become the embodiment of that truth by learning to keep your spending to the minimum and thus free yourself from the system's clutches. You understand the truth that might makes right that might makes right is the law of nature. You become the embodiment of that truth by keeping yourself strong and capable of defending yourself through training in martial arts. You understand the truth that divided we are weak, but united we are unbreakable. You become the embodiment of that truth by engaging in social activities and building a social circle centered around your leadership. If you are the embodiment of truth, then it is not you who is afraid of what others think, but rather everyone else who should be afraid of what you think of them. Everywhere you go, you learn to impose your understanding of the truth on others. First Steps the above-mentioned lifestyle may be a drastic departure from your current mode of existence, making the changes seem impossibly difficult. And indeed, without the support of a group of people who share the same values and aspirations, it can be hard to stay the course, let alone start the process. Many of the changes require more than simply willpower and discipline. They are a learning experience, and like all learning processes, they take time to solidify inside you. As such, you need to take the steps one at a time and master the skills before moving on. Changing your life in one area will make changes easier in all others, creating momentum. Quitting degenerate entertainment will, flee will free your time, allowing you to do other things. Improving your physical strength will give you energy and willpower to act in all areas of life. Reducing your spending will allow you to work less and thus be less stressed out about money and your ties to the system, giving you physical and mental freedom to act. By building a social circle of like-minded people, you will have encouragement and social pressure to stay on the right path, and will be bolstered by sharing that path with others. But it is imperative that you start now. There will never be a better time than now, and to make that as easy as possible, we will provide the first steps to take and provide the resources you will need at first. Among the suggestions which follow, don't try to implement everything at once. Take things progressively, and wait until you're well settled into your new mode of existence before contemplating further changes. Also, for each step you take, you should perform some concrete act to manifest your resolve, a ceremony of sorts, in order to signal a change in your life. Simply wishing or deciding on something in the abstract is usually insufficient to bring about effective change. Stop Consumption of Entertainment Media The first area is one which perhaps has the greatest psychological impact on our lives. Our dependence on the news and entertainment media. The system uses entertainment to put the masses to sleep in spite of the increasingly hostile environment they have to cope with. Most of it is mind poison of varying vir virulence. You must begin to wean yourself off of it. The easiest part of this is probably to stop obsessively following the news, especially about system politics. If reading the daily newspaper and watching TV news is a part of your routine, stop it. Your mind will be freed of a useless burden. Someday it may be necessary to stop to stay on top of the news for tactical purposes, but until you're in a position to do something about the information, they will only be a stain on you. Strain on you, excuse me. When people around you broach the topic, use the opportunity to express your worldview instead of the f following of instead of following the herd. Remember that your computer, phone, tablet, or other devices are tools to be used by you, not something that should enslave you. If you find yourself being glued to these devices, wasting your days away, take steps to repurpose them to a more constructive use. Deleting apps and files that are distracting you from your duties may be necessary. 
Canceling your cable subscription and repurposing your TV as a computer monitor is another helpful idea. But any source of media that you cut out of your life will create a gap that must be filled with something else. You have to find healthier alternatives to fill your new free time with. Otherwise, you will be unbearably bored and likely to relapse into old habits. Start a new sport. Engage in more social activities. Attend classes or learn new skills, like playing an instrument or learning a trade. The point is to become independent of the system, not to stop having fun. Reduce spending. In the same way that severing your connection to news and entertainment media makes you mentally free from the system's pressure and brainwashing, reducing your financial needs reduces your physical dependence on the system. If you wisely adjust your lifestyle, you can certainly reduce your overall spending by 50 to 90 percent, which can make holding a steady job unnecessary and allow you to avoid paying taxes to the system. Food. Switching from a modern diet, based on heavily processed industrial foods and products imported from all over the world, to a more traditional diet can give enormous saving. Of course, there is no question here of sacrificing your health just to save money, but in most instances, the traditional diet will be healthier than modern foods. And of course, buying base ingredients like wheat flour, dried legumes, not even sure what that is, dried legumes, and fresh in season produce will reduce costs by at least 75% over buying prepackaged processed food. Cooking your own food does take time and some dedication, but would you rather spend that same time slaving away for the system to make up the monetary difference? Also, meat is the most expensive type of food. If you insist on eating a lot of it, try to buy whole animals with friends and family to reduce the cost. Housing. For many people, this is the primary cost of living, and changes here will have the greatest impact on your dependence to the system, but may also require the greatest sacrifice of lifestyle. The easiest method is to share housing with family and or friends. This was done universally before the modern wave of, of individualism in the modern period, and is a good survival strategy in general, as it allows specialization of roles in the household. More radical possibilities include squatting in abandoned buildings, living in a van or bus, building a low-cost shelter on public land. Those latter strategies will require considerable personal commitment and research to pull off successfully, and their success may depend on the climate or other situational factors. More detail will be given in later manuals. Transport. Obviously, avoid paying transportation fees if possible, by walking or biking to your destination. Some brave souls bike even in winter, otherwise favor public transport. Avoid, above all, paying expensive car payments on top of regular mechanics visits and fuel costs. Buying old used cars and changing them when they, need, when they break, or fixing them yourself if you have the skills, will save you a fortune if you must have a car, and yes, in many circumstances a car is a necessity, but having a brand new year's model with all the options and a $600 monthly payment plan is never necessary. Other Purchases For everything you buy, ask yourself first, do I really need this? Then ask, do I really need it now? Often if you just put off buying something, the need will go away or you'll get the thing for free or at a huge discount later. Later, excuse me. If you really need something now, buy it used or at a heavy discount whenever possible. Classified online ads, friends and family, auctions and seasonal sales are all opportunities to get what you need at a fraction of the price. And needless to say, buying everything second hand avoids leaving a paper trace of all of your transactions for the system to follow. Again, implementing all of these measures could conceivably reduce your needs to the point where only 5 to 10 hours of work per week are necessary to pay all your bills. This could mean working 2 to 3 months out of the year, and spending the rest of the time free to do as you wish, which is ideal for a revolutionary. Physical training. Your body is a tool. If it's in such a state of disrepair or atrophy that it can't perform at the level you will need, then none of your good intentions will produce good results. 
A strong and resilient body is a necessary tool in the fascist's arsenal. If you are in adequate if you are in inadequate shape, then a general strengthening is in order. Can you run up a flight of stair th stairs without getting a heart attack? Can you lift an injured friend and get him out of dangerous area quickly? Can you easily jump over fences and barricades or hoist yourself over a wall? If not, then you need to build up your basic strength. Power lifting is the quickest and most efficient way to get stronger quickly, but may require equipment you don't have access to weights and a power rack. In any case, find a program you can follow that will get you in good, sh good enough shape. A structured and progressive program is necessary. Doing random exercises will only waste your time. If you're ready, goodness, if you're already in good physical shape, then focus on building up useful skills, especially martial arts and survival abilities. Do whatever you think may be most useful in your circumstances. Suggestions boxing, wrestling, parkour, or uh, obstacle navigation, wilderness survival without extensive modern equipment, and firearm handling. Build social presence. The goal of any isolated fascist must be to build a social circle around him with other fascists and eventually a chapter dedicated to the struggle. A following manual will be dedicated to this subject. However, in the modern world, many people are socially isolated. This is in part because of the rise of new information, technologies, and the prevalence of electronic methods of entertainment and communication. But it is also a consequence of the individualism prevalent in the modern world view. If you are, like many people, socially isolated, spending most of your free time alone with a computer, then breaking out of that is a prerequisite to applying the methods in the following manuals. You need to become more sociable in real life and build up your confidence in talking to others, even while no explicit political discourse is present. Follow the example of James Mason, quote, People get to know me first. While they're getting to know me, they're getting to know Hitler and National Socialism because I am inseparable from these and do nothing to try and hide any of it. End quote. If this is difficult, then resolve to never refuse invitations to social events, obviously unless they are grossly degenerate affairs, and strive to share your thoughts and feelings with the people around. This doesn't necessarily involve talking about your political views, but simply opening up to others so that they feel like they know you. Strive to be a part of the events happening around you, rather than comfortably remaining an outsider. That concludes chapter 4 of Mental Liberation.